Thomas, welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So guys, I came across this weird story today that was all over the media. I mean, it was like in CBS, um, Washington Post. It was like four or five articles. I gotta be honest, I don't understand why. I don't understand why this is taking up um, newspaper real estate, or for that matter, intellectual real estate. So Donald Trump um, brought in multiple black colleges to, to the White House to have a conversation. They were in the Oval Office. While having this conversation, Kellyanne Conway was sitting on the couch with no shoes on, playing on the phone. That's it. That's the entire story. Kellyanne Conway was sitting on the couch, playing on the phone with a lot of other black people in the room, along with Donald Trump. I don't know why that's the story. Um, the only reason I'm doing this particular story, Sean King. So, Sean King on Twitter tweeted this out. He says, I titled this picture, Hidden Fences. The same lack of respect for black excellence that causes that mix-up is what has Conway so casual. I don't know what that means. I don't get it. Dude, just stop. Just stop. And I'm not saying this as an absolute. Like, I'm not saying this over everything. I'm being very specific to what I'm talking about to this particular thing. Dude, this does not help your objectives. You're looking at a picture. And from a purely ideological standpoint, a purely biased standpoint, you're trying to make some point that I don't quite get. And in making that point, you're using the most trivial thing to try to make it. There is no there there. She's playing on the phone with no shoes on. So what? So what? You gotta explain to me, what does Kelly Conway, or for that matter, any random white woman sitting on a couch in the Oval Office with no shoes on, have, in the presence of a bunch of black people, have to do with disrespecting black excellence? For that matter, what does that have to do with race at all? What am I missing? I mean, look, I, I felt the same way when Obama was in office and he was rolled up his shirt. So what? That's what people do when they work. It's like they're, they're so focused on the trivial minutia of things that the big things, the big, big overarching things, the things that's gonna hurt people, that's gonna hit people in their wallet, those things are all, why is this a story? Why is this a story? Are you telling me that there's not enough information? There's not enough things for Sean King to analyze and review, to try to rebuke, to point at. This is the top of the list for the day? This is the top of the thing that's on his agenda? Dude, you undercut yourself. You do not. You're not going to prosper on this. this. In fact, you're hurting whatever cause you believe you're standing up for. I feel the same way about Hillary Clinton when she was in the primaries. Hillary Clinton was making this argument in the primaries that everybody was sexist. I have a vagina, and if you don't want me to be president, you're being sexist. Bernie Sanders was being sexist. This was the argument that they consistently rolled out against Bernie Sanders. Clearly, Bernie Sanders was not sexist. And by Cl Hillary Clinton using sexism out of purely political expedience, she completely guts any argument and all credibility when she actually makes that argument for something that is actually sexism. This is this exact same damn thing. As an African American man, and yes, part Native American heritage, but for the most part I only identify as an African American man. This bugs the shit out of me. I look, there are real racism is real. Don't don't get me wrong. The Southern strategy, the whole point of the Southern strategy was to gen up white resentment against blacks, get those people into the Republican Party and turn them into a voting majority so they can vote against their own self-interest. To some degree, Romney and Trump ran the same campaign. Trump was more overt about it. Those jokes about Obama with a bone in his nose, those jokes about a birther, those jokes about him being an ape and all this other stuff, yes, that stuff had a racist connotation to it. Absolutely, totally, full agreement. If you're going to make that argument that racism exists, and then you're going to tweet out something like this, let's say just within the body of work, let's say out of 30, 40 stories, if this is going to be part of that story, that completely guts your other arguments. 
Those other arguments might be legit. Those other arguments may make people uncomfortable. Those other arguments may piss people off that don't and fundamentally disagrees with you. Credibility is your strength. Credibility is your armor. Credibility is the thing that allows you to stand there and make a case. And you can point back to your body of work and say, look, I've been even and clear and honest in all of the things that I've done up to this point. Yes, I'm calling so-and-so racist. And my category of work or my body of work backs me up that I am honest and earnest when I'm making those cases. This is not earnest. There is no there there. How on earth is a woman sitting on the couch with no shoes on have anything with race or black excellence? I, I hate this. I had this conversation with, um, we're, again, we're playing chess. We're at like a library, a chess club. And um, a white guy and a black guy were playing chess. And the white guy, they were engaging in some kind of argument or some kind of discussion or something. And at a certain point, dude turns to the white guy and says something like, um, why is it that when blacks say something, there's always an argument? The white guy looked at me and I'm like, I have no idea what the hell he's talking about. You destroy your credibility with stuff like this. There will be times where you will be called to make an undesirable argument, just undesirable in the things that people are going to say against you or say about you and attack you for it. Again, credibility is your armor. Credibility is the thing that allows you to make that case, to pull people over to your side, or to the very least, let people give you the benefit of the doubt, whether they agree with you or not, whether they can empathize with the things that you're saying or not. At least, credibility gives you the, some, level of, some level of an in. This is not credible. There is no there there. And I just need you to stop. I, I looked up information, did Sean King say anything about Obama disrespecting the office? But of course, Obama's black. So by proxy of him being black, how is a black person gonna disrespect black excellence? I guess what I'm saying is, in the same way that Obama rolling up his sleeves wasn't a controversy. Kelly Conway sitting on the couch with a bunch of other black people in the room. It's not a controversy. It's, it's almost like he's saying, her not being uncomfortable, or her being comfortable, in the presence of black people is insulting to me. It's disrespectful to black excellence. Surely, surely, please, surely tell me you know that it's an absolutely absurd argument. Stick with things that matter, dude. This is not one of them. This is not one of them. Thanks, guys.